Film Rad takes a drastically different approach from something like Stampede, which I thought was going to be the new norm. Where Stampede chooses to lean into the canon characters and turns the entire movie into like a fun spectacle where you're seeing all your favorite little guys interact. Film Red instead feels similar to Film Z in the sense that the entire movie feels more like a character study with canon characters on the side. There are still a few canon characters in this movie like Bartolomeo and Law and Beppo, but these characters play very minor roles, not even getting that much screen time or fights or um, anything really. And instead a lot of the movie focuses heavily on Uda and her relationship with Luffy. Don't get me wrong, there are cool moments where side characters are doing things, not always flashy or important, but fun, lighthearted, cool, cute, and that's perfectly fine. In most of these movies, that's all I really wanted. Just seeing a little bit more of this world and the cool things that we're able to do in this world. Something that I feel like we've enhanced heavily in this movie with Uda's fruit ability, as the main core of this movie utilizes the Sing Sing fruit, making me ask the question, is One Piece a musical? Her singing adding a layer of choreography to the fights that's really appreciated, though admittedly a bit distracting depending on the scene and the 3D model. But if you can move past that, there is so much more to be gained as the Sing Sing Fruit literally allows Uda to create whatever she can imagine. And given how this whole movie focuses around the Straw Hats going to a concert with Uda and her in turn taking control of the entire island as she tries to create this like new era through her own distorted lens, I think this was the perfect ability for Uda to have, literally showing us what she is dreaming. So, since she is the focal point of Film Red, we should talk about her. An interesting thing that I really enjoyed from Film Red was how we handled Uda's characterization to the point where she has interesting interactions on an almost beat by beat basis. And your interpretation of these interactions changes depending on what you currently know about her situation. So if you were to rewatch the movie, you would have a very different interpretation of these events. A really interesting beat by beat interaction is her first real plea with Luffy. And I find both Uda and Luffy's conversation really well handled. At first we see Uda covering her real intentions with a persona of an overly bubbly innocent character who wants to make the world a better place. And this bubbly persona fluctuates throughout the scene from an act that she's putting on to a very genuine interaction. She uses this bubbly persona to get closer to the crew, but she never really has an intention of interacting with her crew. Because this is all an act, because she's not really a fan of pirates. So a lot of her dialogue is very surface level. She doesn't ask anyone's name, she doesn't ask about what they've done or where they're going. This is where we get to see a bit of her real intentions as she's not so subtly asking Luffy where Shanks is. After not getting the information that she wants, she instead pivots and distracts Luffy with a game. In this game, she goes from a bubbly persona to a state of melancholy as she understands that Luffy is a pirate before genuinely attempting to have a bonding moment with Luffy through this game of who can eat the fastest. I think that this game that they play is doing two things. One, it's her attempting to relive the old days and forget about what she's planning on doing, instead focusing on what used to be. Secondly, I think it's actually her attempt at bonding with Luffy so that she can lower his guard for when she eventually pleads with him to forget about his life of piracy. Because once this game is over, she does eventually do just that. She pleads with Luffy to drop his life of piracy and choose to be happy with her. Luffy reacts with a state of avoidance. He doesn't tell Uda outright anything. This is a not so subtle rejection by Luffy in the most peaceful way he can muster. Uda then tries again and goes from pleading with Luffy to begging. Luffy again avoids this by answering indirectly and saying that he wants to take a nap. And it's after this moment where part of Uda's facade drops and she goes from the state of begging to demand. You will stop. You won't go anywhere. And decides to capture Luffy's crew. Luffy throughout this entire movie does seem to trust Uda, at least to the point of not attacking her, and I find it interesting to note that when the entire crew is taken and she demands Luffy to stop being a pirate, that demand is actually an attack on Luffy's character. 
it is attacking his aspirations, his hopes, his dreams. And so this demand acts a lot like an insult and a verbal attack, forcing Luffy into action, which he nearly jumps into when he, for a brief moment, goes into a second gear pose before a moment of recollection. It is a beautiful bit of conflict that is found in this movie. And everything that I have talked about takes an entirely different meaning once we learn about Uda's past, where we learn that she wasn't really left by Shanks, and that Shanks didn't really kill everyone on the island, but instead it was Uda's doing, or the devil fruit that she holds. And now when looking back at this entire story and every single interaction we have with Uda, there's now a layer of doubt betrayal, self-hatred, and guilt that she's trying to process, or at least hide throughout every interaction. Throughout this entire movie, Uda acts with a level of nonchalantness that can only be achieved by detaching yourself from reality, which in part is something that her fruit literally allows her to do, but something that she has to do because she's constantly having to come to terms with knowing that the very thing she enjoys has caused an immense amount of suffering for others. In fact, almost everything that she's enjoyed, someone else has been hurt by. Her singing ability? That led to the creation of an evil monster which has wiped out every single person on the island. Her love of piracy? She's got nothing but negative information about piracy throughout her entire childhood by the world around her. So whenever she's having a conversation with anyone, there are different masks that Uda has to utilize to help with her conscience. Whether it's the role of a singer, of an idol, of a person interacting with their fans, of a bubbly, innocent personality, or a traumatized child. It essentially forces her to be irrational because, as she sees it, herself and the world around her are unethical in a way that she cannot comprehend and or come to terms with or fix. It's actually pretty frightening what happens in this movie, as Uda has to struggle with these issues herself. She has also devolved into eating these shrooms, which has caused her to become delirious to the point where she becomes an enemy to everyone. The Straw Hats who just want to leave, the Marines who genuinely see her as a threat, the people who no longer want to associate with her because of her extreme actions. The random civilians that she's dragging into this. And so it very quickly goes from, oh, she's a villain who we might have to fight, to how do we help her genuinely come to her senses? This becomes a very psychological issue that I feel like everyone has to take with a lot more care. One of the fascinating things about this movie is how we also handle justice, or who's in the wrong here. Because what I found interesting is that for the most part, that's only a secondary issue to the much broader issue of helping Uda. Because for as much as she's done, there isn't really a time where anyone who knows Uda wants to genuinely hurt her, and that feels like a very strategical decision. Luffy tries to reach her and make her stop without resorting to violence. Shanks, once he's gotten Uda, doesn't scold her for what happened, and is even willing to attack anyone who tries to do so because making sure that she's okay takes priority over that, and that is a really warming perspective that I enjoyed. Throughout this movie, there is one negative complaint, but it's a big one. I don't like that there's a music demon that has bond when you play music too well. That is the one downside for me, and I don't like it. Now, I did put that aside and have to accept that, but there is no devil fruit that functions this way. The closest thing that I can think of is an awakened zone type that kind of has a mind of their own, but are nowhere near the same scale as musical demon monster that is summoned when you play a specific song that we've carved into a wall in the specific island that we landed on. I think we really struggled to come up with a reason as to why Shanks had to abandon a kid on an island while not making him look bad. Never explaining to the kid why this happened or even giving them the ability to master their devil fruit ability like so many other characters got to do. And I think this whole arbitrary big bad demon monster kind of gets in the way of the movie. Because instead of Uda having to come to terms with the fact that maybe not all piracy is bad and the world is more complicated than it appears, and maybe there's a reason why they needed to leave her behind. All of this really gets sidetracked by, oh, there's a big monster we gotta fight now. Oh, we beat him? We're all cool now. I don't like it. All right, some of the smaller things that I really enjoyed, but I don't know where to put anywhere else, so they're gonna be here, and I might as well mention them. I like that we got outfit swaps. 
especially in this one, as they are Una's attempts at villainizing the crew by turning them into stereotypical pirates. Except they're cool pirates, and they're not really, like, scary or evil. But I like the outfits. I liked a lot of the music in this movie. Good, as I should, I think. It obviously gets the best soundtrack in all of the movies so far. Uh, okay, next up, Spectacle. There's a lot of spectacle. We get to see a lot of cool shots here while Uda is singing. Jimbei and Frankie really helped in that department. Also, we got Fujitori and all the Marines fighting Uda. That was a pretty cool moment. I feel like all of the scenes here were directed spectacularly. Maybe because we had to focus on the timing a lot more. Because music. Uh, Shanks fought Kizaru. Kind of. He got to him fast. Even deflecting his light beams, which that's pretty sick. It was very short-lived, but very cool. Uda summons a monster that appears in both the dream and the real world, and in order to beat it, you have to attack it at the same time in both the dream and the real world. The problem is that you can't see each other because one's in the dream world, so you somehow have to coordinate the attacks at the same time. How do you coordinate the attacks at the same time? With observation hockey! I'm not sure if we saw something like this before, or even if it's a thing outside of this movie, but you can use observation hockey to see into other people's perspectives. It's implied that it might work if you have a similar vision, literally and metaphorically. It's weird. I'm okay with it. I'm not against it. But it does imply a lot of things from a world building perspective. From a writing perspective, I think that it's a solution that allows Shanks' crew and Luffy's crew to work together while technically never interacting. Because Shanks and Luffy can't meet up yet. Same with Usopp. So I think the best solution is one where they don't technically talk to each other, but they do understand each other's perspectives or see through each other's eyes and are on the same wavelength. I think it is the closest solution to have to having these characters interacting with each other while also technically not interacting with each other. It is the closest solution given our constraints. Also, there's a few episodes in the anime that gives us a lot more insight into Uda and Luffy's relationship. I think it's nice. The episodes aren't too important, but they are fun and charming and retroactively might have given us a reason as to why Luffy wanted a musician at the start, which is a nice addition if it's intentional. And with that, we have officially finished all of the movies. Did that take a little bit too long? Shush! We, uh, let's not talk about time. Time is subjective, you know? I, uh, man, when you're having fun, the point is, uh, we're through them all. Right, guys? I thought this would take, like, a month at most. Um, <laughs> nope. 